Hi everyone, Brad Bone here, back with another one. And on this week's episode of the Weekly Purple Team, we're going to be purple teaming Linux persistence. So persistence in the Linux world, very different than persistence in the Windows world. I find that EDR in the Linux world is lacking massively, right? So once you get in, you typically can persist sometimes forever. You can do root kits, you can do persistence methods. But in this week's purple team, we're going to be taking a look at demonized shell. This is a quick way of creating persistence within a Linux system. And we'll create that persistence. We'll create a, a callback that happens. And then we're going to show the detection, of course, right? Number one, make sure your Linux systems are logging to sin because your EDR may not be doing what it should do with these. A lot of EDR companies claim to have protection for Linux and Mac, but it's not like it is for Windows. So let's start with that. But regardless, let's talk about how we would get into a Linux system to start. It's not the same as a Windows system. A lot of the time you're going to do simple things like brute force. So in this case, let's do a simple in-map scan. We'll take a look at this host, right? This would be step one. We're doing our, our discovery. So we'll go ahead and just do a simple in-map scan here of this Linux host and let's see what's available. What can we go after? Okay, SSH. So everything else is closed except SSH. All right, what do we attempt next? We typically would attempt some kind of brute force, right? Or some kind of login method. Steal an SSH key that we found somewhere. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to try to brute force, right? So we'll just use Hydra. We have a simple user list, a simple password list. You could, of course, if you were in the middle of an engagement, craft your own that was much more specific uh, using, you know, common things, uh, commonly used passwords. But this is how you would run Hydra against the host to brute force it. So we'll go ahead and give it a shot here. And we can say, OK, yep, we got a winner. So what do we do next? We log in. Let's log in. We'll do SSH. And we're going to do Ubuntu at 192.168.138.101. And then the password that we found with our brute force. And then we're in. So you can look at your own user. You can look at uh, Etsy password to figure out what level permissions you have. Or you, if you're brave enough and you don't think the system is well monitored, you can simply try to sudo. So if I do sudo su minus, and I'm allowed to do so, it will give me a root shell like it just did here, right? So in this case, I logged in and I was root. Now I'm finding this more and more that when I log in, I am in sudoers, right? It's not uncommon when you get into a Linux system to be in sudoers. So if you got a really good Linux admin, they've put stuff around this, but it's pretty rare. So anyway, we're in his root. So what do we do next? We want to persist. So let's try our demonized shell that we were talking about. And we'll simply curl this down. We're going to curl this down from GitHub. This works too, constantly. It, it's just like a download cradle, right? You should know what curl is doing in your network, especially now that it's added to Windows. But now we have our demonized shell, so we can persist. Let's run a couple of these persistence methods, right? Well, one of my very favorites, let me exit this, I'll clear it out. We'll create a netcat listener. One of my favorites is crontab, right? So you can persist in crontab, we'll just do 0, 03 here. And then we're going to do no, you can do any custom command that you want, but in this case, we're just going to have it do a reverse shell. So we'll do 192, 168, 138. Dot 30, and then we'll do our port 4444. And then it's successfully added to cron tab. So what that means is every minute it's going to try to connect back to your host. So if you know it persists, then even a reboot, cron tab is still there. It's going to try to connect back to you. And if I come over here in just a minute, it should try to connect back to me on 4444. And I got it right, right? I did. I got the port right. So we'll let that go. In just a second, we should have a shell. 
Now, this, if you follow the defaults, it, uh, it goes into temp. So we'll go CD temp. Slash temp. And in here, you will find the demonized shell static. Once it's on the system, you just sudo this into bash. You just pull this into bash. You don't have to make it executable. Just sudo it into bash, just like this. And if you want to run it again, then you can run these methods. So we come over here. We now have our shell. Now you see who am I? I'm root. All right. So let's do another one. Um, let's do, we've done contact persistence. Let's do our, we'll do privileged user and SUID bash. So what this does is it creates a user. That user then has set UID for everything in bin bash. So it doesn't matter even if, you know, if they find the user, and it's, they'll look at it, it'll look like a low privilege user, but then it has set UID for everything in the entirety of bin bash, which is all the utilities you would need to escalate again. Uh, so we'll do that, we'll just do 07. And we'll do, let's see, who should we do for our username? And considering we have our uh, comic book uh, contest going on, we'll do Eddie Brock. There's our username. And we'll give him a password here. It's going to tell me bad password because I'm typing a short password. And then you just walk through this. Tell it the information is correct. And then you can see here it created a root, created with root permissions and set UID in bin bash. So that user is a persistent user. You can log in as that user. Even if they don't have permissions to everything, they have set UID on everything. So you know, it's basically having a root user without having a root user. It's pretty awesome. So let's run our uh, utility one more time. We'll do one more persistence method, and then we'll get into our blue team detection of this. Uh, so let's do bash persistence. If we do 06, you just give it your listener one more time. And then you give it the port. And then it literally goes into the bash RC of every single user. <laughs> and basically, if bash is activated, it kicks it back to you. So pretty cool persistence methods. Uh, apt persistence is also an interesting one. You hook apt. So when they run apt get or any of the apt utilities, it will automatically create a shell for you or run whatever command you want it to run. So these are pretty cool. Now, okay, that's the red. We have compromised our Linux system. We have loaded some persistence methods using demonized shell. If you're going to use this in the real world, you probably want to clean up your, ta your tracks. So we'll just do removal of the demonized shell, and we're good to go. Okay, so next step. For us to detect this kind of attack, most of the time, EDR, and it's hit or miss on Linux. So you're using SIM. For your detection. Now, for effective detection on Linux hosts, you really need to have AuditD. AuditD is the extended auditing for Linux. But I do recommend that you put a decent rule set into AuditD. Now, the one we're looking at here is from Florian Roth. Many of you guys may have know of Florian Roth, very famous in the Blue Team community, part of the Sigma project, and his rules are more than sufficient for catching the persistence methods that we just did, right? And this is a pretty decent rule file. So you can just copy this, put it into your audit D, restart audit D, and then you will find any of these suspicious methods that are there for Linux. Then they log to SIM and you can catch this stuff. All right, so let's go over to our SIM and let's find our bad guy. So let's start with the SSH brute force. I would hope you guys have something already in place for this, but if you don't, we can find it. So you just want to look for event category authentication, event outcome failure, and process name SSHD. So this, we would see the failures here. And as you can see here, we have user root failed, user Ubuntu failed, 
and we only tested three users here, typically you would have a whole bunch of failures. So if you've got, say, more than 20 failures in five minutes, maybe you need to be looking at that host. So that's the first method. The next thing that we did is after we got our brute force and we logged in via SSH, we then curled down the utility from GitHub. <laughs> I really hope that you are watching this kind of stuff in your network. A lot of hacker tools live on GitHub. Curl is now on Windows now. So having a rule about curl pulling things from GitHub, yeah, I would definitely have this. So this may take a minute to run here, but we should be able to pull this. Uh, let's see, curl on GitHub. Let me pull my time frame back. We'll go today. My sim has been misbehaving a bit. There we go. Oh, no. There it is. Okay. And you can see right here we have our audit D log proc title. This tells us the process that happened. We can see curl and then we see raw github.com, right? So there it is. And this happened a bunch, as you can see, <laughs> right? It downloaded a bunch of things. So that is your detection there. You can literally do stars and GitHub, or you can literally just go through and create some regexes for a better, more efficient rule. But this is just showing you how you can find it. And notice we needed audit D for this. Right? There are ways you can detect it otherwise, but Audit D give us, gives us the best visibility. The next thing, we want to detect the usage of Demonize Shell. And for this one, you can just do process args, anything with the word daemon in it. And it should show us demonized shell over here. And there it is right there. There's our removal of demonized shell. Here is our bash of demonized shell. Here is our sudo. You can go through these, but you can see this is all of the running of demonized shell. Now we did some persistence methods here. We did cron tab, so we'll detect cron tab. And this one is simply audit D log proc title, etc. star cron tab. So this is the editing of cron tab in et cetera. You can see right here, this is sudo t dash a etsy cron tab. So this is the editing of the cron tab file to get us to have our shell callback. We'd actually have to go look at the cron tab file to see the shell callback. It's in there though, uh, but you can see there's quite a bit of this right here. And you can even see over here, it comes from the bash of deep my shell. And let's take a look for our user ad. So simply user ad. You just want to look for user ad, period. User ad is the command for Linux that adds a user. So simply adding a user to the system, you need to know when that happens. That should not be very frequent. Um, of course, we're doing star searches here, and this is a pretty busy sim, so it may take a minute for this to run. But as you can see right there, there's our usage of user ad for at Eddie Brock. Now notice this, though. This is our set UID for Ben Bash. So with audit D, it shows us the entire command. Now, if we just want the set UID for Ben Bash, you can do audit D log proc, ti proc title, and you can see when you chmod for it. And here it is right here. This is when this is the setting of set UID on the bin bash folder if we come over here let's expand this and we can look this is from the audit log you can see right here very clear chmod u plus s at bin bash is the is the uh command that was run of course there's ats and separators here but if you're looking at this and you know linux you know that this is setting and set uid so that is the red and the blue for Linux persistence. Now there's a lot more here. I've just scratched the surface, but I wanted to see 
Number one, how you guys react to me doing some things around Linux. We talk a lot about Windows. We talk about advanced topics with Windows, a lot more advanced than this. But I thought, okay, let's cover Linux a little bit this week and see how it goes. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching the weekly Purple Team and hack the planet to defend better.